Well, I am so excited today because I have uh, one of our ultimate music theory elite educators, Mark here. I'm going to let him introduce himself in a minute. But one of the things that I'm so excited about is because of the UMT elite educator program, not only have Mark and I become colleagues and he's been obviously in all of our coaching and gone through the program, but he's also become someone that I call my friend. And so I want to say thank you, Mark, for hanging out with me today and jumping in on the interview. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. My pleasure. Oh, uh, great. So just for our, um, you know, for our viewers today, can you tell me, just sort of introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, what you teach and, and, uh, and how you found the UMT program? Well, I am a, vi I'm a violist and um, I've been teaching violin and viola for a little bit more than 30 years um, and have always taught theory as part of what I do, but kind of in a haphazard way, not in a structured way. And um, so a year ago, my students started taking RCM exams. I became introduced right. to RCM. And through that, I needed for my more advanced students to be prepared to take RCM theory exams so that they could get their certificates. Right. And at that point, I thought, I need to find somebody who's developed a curriculum. So I looked at um, several curriculums. And when I found yours, I was intrigued. And so I ended up uh, uh, becoming part of the elite educator program. And, uh, and then I'm enjoying going through the um, certification program and learning to be a much better theory educator. Absolutely. And you know, it's interesting that you mentioned the instruments. Can you tell us, because I, I know you've really, really grown, um, you know, as a, as a business owner, uh, what is the, what is your business um, like called? Like, how can people find you? Okay, well, I am uh, markpf.com. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so if you look for markpf.com, you'll find me there. Um, nice. I, that's my website. And it's Planchmit. Mark Planchmit. Von Schmidt. Von Schmidt. And see, I told you, Mark and I were, before we came on the <laughs> interview, I said, I have this problem. I, I, you know, grew up, you know, kind of learning another language before I learned English. And so sometimes that, that gets me into trouble. But uh, I'm really excited that you're here. And, you know, maybe you can share with us, where was your business before you signed up for the UMTC Lead Educator Program? Well, um, as I said, I've been teaching for more than 30 years, so I definitely was an established teacher in the area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, I was looking to, to be able to do some things uh, to make things better. And the biggest thing is, um, and as I've talked to a lot of my colleagues as well, you know, we didn't study marketing in music school. We didn't right. study, and, and I mean, I went through my bachelor's degree using a typewriter to type my papers. I mean, it was in the days before computers. So, yes. um, you know, so, so there, there's, there's been a lot that's been happening with technology. Yes. And, um, and I know that technology can be very helpful. I just didn't know how to use it. Yes. And uh, so in taking the elite educator course, um, there's, just, there's tons of stuff that I can implement uh, still um, as I need it. But one of the things that I really appreciated about the course that you put together is the information was there. And then I have the opportunity to be able to implement it as it suits my particular program. Right. And it was really cool. And I just kept going, oh, this is amazing. Oh, this is amazing. How come I didn't know this? Um, so it was a lot of fun just to be able to, uh, to learn, uh, uh, particularly some of those things about marketing and using mm -hmm. the internet and using tools that are designed to automate some of the process. Yes, and I appreciate that, Mark. You know, one of the things I found too is that, um, you know, there's a lot of educators that are in the Elite Educator Program that, you know, probably have more degrees and letters behind their name than I do. And yet they're in the program because exactly what you said is that we are, number one, we're educators, we're passionate about teaching and we're passionate about the music. But that doesn't fill our studios. That doesn't even keep our students interested. There's a lot of things that go into running a business, which is what we are. And oftentimes, you know, I hear teachers say, oh, I'm just a music teacher. No, you're not 
just a music teacher. You're a business owner and you have all this opportunity to be, you know, there's no reason why you can't be hitting six figures a year easily by just thinking and, you know, implementing the information. Um, I guess one of the questions, because I know where you were when you started, and maybe you can share, like, how did the UMT Elite Educator Program help you grow your business? Because I know you have grown. That is true. That is true. So um, my income has grown 60% this year. So uh, unbelievable. And, and I would say more than half of that 60% is attributable directly to um, teaching music theory classes, um, which is a big part of um, what has helped me in my business uh, through the Elite Educator Program. Yeah, one of the things that I remember, um, you know, we take great pride in, in supporting each other as we're going through the journey of growing together. And it really lights me up, especially inside the Elite Educator Facebook group. You know, everyone's like, yay, Mark, and yay, this, and that's so cool. And, you know, even the thought process of, of um, saying, you know, you, you've developed a logo, you've developed your brand. And, you know, we talked a lot about it's great that you have friends. So think about, you know, you're going to have an operation. You need, you know, something fixed on your elbow, for example. Well, you don't go and ask your friends and say, how do you think this should, what do you think surgery is required? And yet, when it comes to marketing, we ask our friends and family, they go, oh, here's a logo. What do you think? And my reaction is, why are you asking someone who has never studied marketing and doesn't know anything about it their opinion when you don't ask them how to, you know, fix your elbow. But it's interesting because we don't necessarily think about that, right? No, and, and that's right. And, you know, I, I realize even just tossing around the term marketing, I don't think I even knew what that meant when I started, you know. So, so just as an example, I now I have a logo and I have a tagline. I remember, um, I remember, um, I, I was working on, on my logo and I sent it to you and you said, Mark, it looks great, but yeah. where's your tagline? And I thought, tagline, what's, you know, I know what a tagline is, but I just, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, and yeah. then the other thing that was so interesting was doing my first promotional video. Yeah. <laughs> and my video, which I think is two minutes and 43 seconds long or something like that, yeah. took well over a hundred hours. Yeah to produce because it was just, it was script writing. But yeah. the, the process was so, so helpful. Yeah. And, um, and I just appreciated all of the, the tips and the help that was in the course that helped me to be able to do that. And of course, you know, you were talking about, it's important to go to people who have professional experience. And of course, one of the things that you bring to the course is your professional experience as a videographer for many years. Yes. Yes. So you you know, it just it's just one more thing that that helps us as elite educators, not just me, but the others in yeah. the program, to be able to produce a video that I mean, I'm not a professional on camera person. Okay. So and that's not important. What's important is to be able to present my yes. information clearly and in a focused manner to help people understand what my program is about. 100% really well said, Mark. That is what it is about. And in today's world, whether you're teaching in person or whether you're teaching online, in order to grow your, your business, and I mean, we can teach till we're like 120 years old if we want to, we still need to reach out to people and we still need to show our, our confidence and who we are and get people to know us because otherwise, how are they even going to find you? And, um, you know, the process that I'm smiling when you're talking about Gloria, it took 100 hours to do a two-minute video. I mean, obviously, we're exaggerating just a tiny bit, but not very much. Not much. Not much. I know. Um, I've done thousands of videos. I know how much time it takes to write the script. And even in the Ultimate Music Teachers membership site, there is, you know, a gazillion videos in there in the Ultimate Music Theory Certification course, and you know because you've been through it. There's a lot of videos in there, and all of them have to be scripted, and they have to be written, and you have to put a smile on your face, and, you know, you, you got to think about everything that goes into it. But the end result is, 
is that you can reach more people and find more students. And, and by the time they actually get to talk to you and come to you for a lesson, they're like, oh, I know Mark, Mark, you know, he's always smiling. He's, you know, got a great happy face. And, and I just, I like his demeanor. So now you've already given that message across. So I think it's really important for us to just communicate and, and just be real, you know, just be real, be who you are. Uh, you know, we don't need to pretend to be any, don't need to be a sports announcer, you know? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, no, and I think that's, I think that's so true. And I think one of the things that we have to keep in mind as today's educators is a lot of the, the you know, a lot of the, of our students are of grade school age, mm -hmm. which means their parents grew up pointing and clicking from their childhood, from toddlerhood. Yeah. Um, our, our parents typically have Googled us before they even call us. And so if I have the, the, the more content that I have in my internet presence, yes. uh, the more it helps people to feel like they know what they're in for before they even call me. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's interesting you said that, Mark. In my business associates that I work with, and I have, you know, people from Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, you know, Zimbabwe, as you know, within our elite educator program, there is people from all over the world. And when I have someone who is interviewing to come into the elite educator program, uh, the first thing I do is I Google them. I want to know what do they do, um, you know, even in the people that I hire, uh, the first thing that I do is I go and creep on their Facebook page. Like, I want to know what is your presence. And if I see things that are just inappropriate or don't fit my, my model of, of how I present myself, then there's just no point in wasting time interviewing that person or having them in my, you know, my, my, um, my business because it's just not going to be a fit. So I think now more than ever, you're so right. If someone is looking to take lessons from you, the first thing they're going to do is go, oh, there he is. Yeah, he's got a great profile on Facebook. Oh, yeah, I watched one of his videos. Oh, I looked at his website. Like now they go, no, he's a professional. And it really does put you in, in the place that you need to be. And especially uh, as musicians are looking for teachers not only locally anymore. It used to be, oh, I'm just going to put a flyer out, you know, in the neighborhood. But now you can get students from anywhere, you know, and they'll find you because you're good at what you do. Right, right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So what's coming up next for you in your business? Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think one of the things that I'm enjoying right now is enjoying that things are working well. Um, good. But... Um, I, you know, there are, there are some things that I'm, I'm looking for as a string educator. I'm always, um, one of the challenges for me is that music theory is always presented from the keyboard side. Yes. And so for me in school, that was never a problem because I'm also a pianist. Yes. But I remember that many of my classmates who did not have advanced keyboard skills really mm -hmm. struggled. And, um, you know, so for a string player, you know, to know that F sharp to G is a half step is critical yes. just for placement of the fingers. But yes. why is that the case? You know, so, yeah. So, I mean, it just, it's, I mean, this is, this is something that I've taught with scale theory, you know, for decades now. But right. I remember I had to sit down and think, okay, how can I explain this to a string student right. away from the keyboard? Yes. But that said, I think I've, I've come around a lot more um, to the, the, the keyboard, obviously. The biggest thing is you can point to a note. I can yes. point to F sharp. Right. But, but my students still need to figure out what that feels like. Yes. And, and understanding those relationships. But, but still, the, the keyboard is a very useful tool. And now that I'm using the Ultimate Music Theory workbooks, um, which, of course, use the keyboard, um, yes. as a, a visual aid, exactly. I'm realizing that, that some of my apprehension was misplaced. You, yeah. know, my, you know, these are string students after all, so they're already brighter than the average bunch anyway, <laughs> and especially the viola students, I'm a violist. But, um, but what I'm realizing is, you know, uh, they're all doing great. And my, for my <laughs> viola students, this means really jumping in the deep end, because yes. of course, their clef of choice is alto clef. Right. We don't even get to until advanced. Right, yeah. 
Um, so they're having to jump right into reading treble and bass clef. And I yeah. do occasionally see ex examples where they've misidentified a note and they've identified yeah. it as though it were an alto clef. But yeah. they're, they're becoming fluent in, in treble and bass clef, which is just important for their, their growth and understanding as musicians. Absolutely. And, you know, it's interesting too, Mark, because oftentimes, you know, like we think, well, we don't need that because, you know, we, we are guitar players or we just do this. But because you've opened up this world to them, who knows, maybe you've inspired someone who says, you know what, I'd, like, I'd also like to start taking piano lessons, or I'd also like to take guitar lessons, or, you know, like, just because you play one instrument doesn't mean, oh, you can't play two, you know, you can't play three. <laughs> Heaven forbid you should be a multi-instrumentalist and, you know, pick up a whole bunch of instruments. So I think that's really important. And uh, my father, well, actually, and my mom, uh, my mother played the violin, and she also played the accordion, so obviously she did both. Uh, my father played multiple instruments as well and it was just about the language for me as, as you know a young child growing up it was about the language of music and apply it to whatever instrument my my family everybody had to play something or or you know it was like brushing your teeth like you're you're a musician <laughs> whether you like it or not uh, but I think that you are really providing a great service to your to your students Mark and I'm and I'm really just thrilled I mean you know, we've really been working together uh, through the coaching program and the elite educator program for some time now. And I've just seen this, this, um, the growth mindset and just you're open to learning and listening and also a contributor. And I want to, you know, from the bottom of my heart, say thank you for that. Because it's really important as an elite educator, not to think I know it all. And it's also not, um, I just need to learn. I need help. I need help. It's, it's the back and forth, right? That's how we really right. grow. Right. And, you know, it, along with that, one of the things that I've enjoyed with um, Ultimate Music Theory is the certification program and, and seeing all of the, the things that have been put into that program, tips and, and tricks for teaching. And of course, you know, for me as a teacher, I always love learning another way to teach the same old thing. Yes. Um, and, and it's been, I don't, I don't feel like my theory knowledge has grown tremendously, but my understanding of how to teach theory yeah. has grown, you know, and, and just learning ways that make it more fun and memorable yeah. so that my students remember things. Um, so it's, you know, it's just, it's one of the things that, uh, you know, I, I often think, you know, pinch me, I get, you know, I get to do something I love doing. Yeah. I think one of the gets that. Yeah, it's true. And I think one of the things too that one of the reasons I created the, the elite educator program was to really help business owners, you know, obviously, you know, elevate their income, impact their teaching, and grow their expert music business as as a lifestyle. You know, I am so blessed to have the lifestyle that I have. And, you know, yes, it's a gift and I'm grateful, but I've also created it. And that comes through study, through professional development, through continued education, always open to learning and then implementing what I learn. And I, you know, my, my final question for you is, um, what was your biggest takeaway in completing the UMTC Lead Educator Program? Using a planner. Ooh, using a planner. <laughs> I mean, and, and of course, for a lot of people listening to this, I'm sure they're going to laugh. And of course, <laughs> many of my colleagues are wonderful organizers, and they, yeah. it just seems like they were born with a planner in their hand. Yeah. I have shunned planners for decades. Yeah. Um, and, but learning to, learning to use that as a tool, not as a slave master, yes. but as something that's helping me to organize my tasks. And I'm yeah. still very much in the process. It's not like, you know, in two months I become the guy who, you know, the first thing I do in the morning is I grab a cup of coffee and I sit down with my planner. Yeah. But, but I'm using it as a tool and then I'm not forgetting to get some of the things done that I used to yeah. think. Oh, you know, a student comes, it's like, oh, I forgot, you know, yeah. we need to order this music or, you know, or, oh, gee, your exam is coming up. We better be sure that we're actually registered for it. Right. Yes. Um, so, so for those who are like me, <laughs> who, who struggle with that, 
it's it's one of the many benefits of this program is it just yeah. but for me that was a huge takeaway yeah and i think that's really an important thing especially when you're 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 a business that's growing and you know it's it's uh, you're making me smile mark because i am that person that wakes up and has coffee and starts with their planner and and now i know you're kind of on your way there too but it's why we can grow our business rapidly is because we're so organized and and it frees up our mind for other things so that you can go out in the garden because you don't have to go oh i hope i don't forget this and i hope i don't forget that you know even before we we went live with our with our interview today you said oh one second let me put that into my planner and then now it's done and so you can like not even think about it because when you get into the office on monday you can say all right let's just open up and get her done and that's how how we take it to the next level to really become successful the mindset you know the planning everything that it takes to really grow your business and and i really want to say thank you for joining me but also congratulations on your multiple successes that have happened for you um since you've come into the elite educator program and i know we'll continue to serve you in your business mark thank you so much it's been my pleasure yeah i'll see you inside the coaching calls see you then thanks mark bye You're now bye-bye